Hi, my name is Shane Young with Bold Zebras, and today we're going to talk about how to add a server to an Active Directory domain that exists inside of Azure. Um, in one of our previous videos, we built out a couple of domain controllers and we got them all set up. And so in this video, we just want to kind of take that last step and look at how you'd add a server to that domain so that you could uh, take advantage of its services. All right, so here I am in Azure. Uh, you can see I've got the two virtual machines, DC1 and DC2. And so we're going to create a third virtual machine. So we go to Virtual Machines, and we're going to click Add. And once this comes up, we're going to choose Windows Server. Over here on the right, we'll then choose Windows Server 2012 R2 Data Center. It could be any other different flavors of Windows, but for this demo, I decided to use R2. So we'll click that. And over here, we want to make sure we're using the same deployment model. So we're going to use Resource Manager, just like we did in the previous examples. So we're going to say Create. Now we need to provide some basic information. So we'll just call this server Demo file server. I don't know. Easy name, right? And number one. We might have more than one. Who knows? Uh, for username, you can use anything you want. I'm going to use uh, Shane and then my super secret password. Remember, you want to have a good secure password there because it is accessible from the internet. And then once we add it to the domain, we'll start using our domain backslash administrator accounts. But for right now, we're going to use um, this account. It'll be a local machine account. That's how we'll get our initial access. So then for resource group, uh, I'm going to add this to my existing resource group. So use existing. We'll hit the drop down here. And so the resource group I have already established is called DC Video. Um, and we are using the East US location because that's what's closest to me. Uh, in a later video, we're actually going to cover a little more about resource groups, how to manage those, how to delete them, that type of stuff, set up locks. Um, but for this video today, we're just going to do creating a, a machine in that one. So we'll say OK. Because this is a demo, it's going to literally, this VM will live for probably five minutes. Um, we'll just go ahead and take the smallest one here. And so then we'll hit select. All right, so that's the storage account we've been using for the other VMs. So we're going to leave that. That sounds good. For a network, right, this is where you have to make sure you get everything correct, right, because we could have it in different storage accounts. That wouldn't mess anything up. But we need to be in the same virtual network as our domain controller, so that way the connectivity is there. And so that is my virtual network, so that's good. We'll get a public IP. For the network security group, I'm going to hit the uh, bump out here, and I'm actually going to choose the current one. So we'll click on that. So that, that way, my two domain controllers in this server are all in the same security group. For extensions, we're not going to use any, but you could definitely feel free to explore there. We've covered that in other videos. And then for availability set, we're going to leave this at none because I'm not trying to build a high availability solution here. I don't need any redundancy between this VM and another VM, so none is good. Monitoring diagnostic stuff will take the defaults. Click OK. This screen checks that I didn't make any typos. Yay me. So we'll click OK. And so now it's off to the races. We're taken back to the dashboard. You can see that our VM is being created beside the other two. Um, and so while this runs, I'll go ahead and hit pause. So I'll see you in a second. And now that that's finished up, uh, you can see it's taken over here. It says, hey, demo file server one. He's online. Everything's great. So we're going to say connect. And then it's like, hey, do you want to save that file? Yes, I do. And I'm going to do a save as. And so I've been saving all of my RDP files into a set folder. So that way I have easier access to them later. So demo file server one, we'll say save. And then we'll click open. And then it will prompt us to, um, don't ask for any more about this one. That's good. So connect. And then it wants to log in, so I'm going to click More Choices, use a different account. And so then this is the username and password that we specified when we were creating the VM. So Shane and my super secret password, so we'll click OK. More warning messages. Um, don't ask me again for this computer, and say yes. And just like that, we now have a Windows server. Would you like to let other devices be discovered? Sure. And so Server Manager is going to pop up here, right, because this is just a regular old server. So we're going to say configure this local server. And now is always a good time to do things like fix the time zone, um, turn Windows error reporting on or off, uh, deal with updates, that type of stuff. But really for the purpose of this video, what we want to do is go to work group. We're going to click on work group and change. And what we're going to do is we're going to set the domain here to be contoso.com. Click OK. It's like, hey, that's great. What do you want to use? And so. My administrator account for that domain is actually Shane. Probably should have made it something different to be less confusing, but I didn't, sorry. And then there is my password. So we'll say OK. Welcome to the Contoso domain. Click OK. 
Let's restart. All right. So say close and we'll restart now. And while it restarts, I will go ahead and hit pause. I'll be back in just a second. Okay. And now the reboot's done. I'm going to navigate over to C Windows Azure folder again, right? And use my RDP file. So I'll double click on File Server 1. And so then now it's going to prompt me to log in. We want to do more choices again and use a different account. And this time we're going to have to use the Contoso one, right? So Contoso Shane. We don't have to use it. We could still use the local account, but we want to use our domain admin. So Contoso Shane, and then there's the password. And now it would be safe to say remember me, right? Because going forward, I probably want to log in with that account. So we'll say OK. It wants to make sure I'm still safe. Yes. And now it will boot back up. And with server manager loaded, we'll click on configure this local server. And so now you can see we're part of the Contoso domain. So just a few simple steps there to go from a Windows Server provisioned to a Windows Server that is um, part of the domain. So now I can start building up my file server infrastructure or installing SharePoint or Exchange or whatever crazy idea I might have um, put out there. Maybe some new Pokemon Hunter. I don't know. Probably something like that we can install in Windows at this point. So hopefully that clears things up for you on uh, how to get thing get on the domain. So we'll go ahead and close out of this. Please subscribe to the channel and leave any comments on the video or you can always hit me up on Twitter at Shane's Cows or um, you can reach me through Bold Zebras, www.boldzebras.com. Thanks and have a great day.